orient and educate. Many times we bring people on our boards because they believe in our mission, but they've never really taken advantage of our services. Maybe they've never needed them. And if, they, if they've never used our services, how do they really know what we're about? So how do you create a learning opportunity both then and now, then at the time you bring them on, and how do you keep that learning opportunity going as you adopt new programs or, or whatever? I sat, I was the CFO for Fuller Craft Museum down in Brockton. So I lived in the museum when I was there, and, and the board meetings were at the museum for that very purpose, that they would come in. If they didn't come in for the openings of our exhibitions, that they would come in and they would walk through the exhibitions when they were there, you know, before the board meeting, and see what we were about. Um, you know, there were always the standard committee reports to the exhibition committee and things like that, but they really needed to, you know, observe the palpableness of our, of our you know, 3D exhibits, because craft is objects, it's not paintings on a wall. Um, if you want them to be an ambassador for your services or that you're offering, you have to educate them. I mean, some, some, some people serve because it's just fascinating. I mean, the stuff I learned working for the museum was just fascinating. Um, and the stuff I've learned working for other organizations has been fascinating. But that, I, I, it interests me, I'm curious, and then I can actually speak better and more passionately for the organizations that I serve. So think about who, who, who your directors are and what do they know. Um, if nothing else, give them talking points. One thing I find that nonprofits don't do well is orientation. You know, they just, people just show up at board meetings, they're new board members, and you know they're they're they jump they're willing to jump in, but they really don't know. And and there's, I think we need to do a better job as as a or, I don't know, segment of, of business, so to speak, of orienting our board members so we get better, you know, they get better performance out of us, and we get better performance out of them. Um, doesn't have to be you know long. It just needs to be, this is what we're about, that type of thing. When I was at the museum, some of the things I did, I, had a, I eventually ended up with a killer finance committee because um, we needed it. It ended up being the most powerful committee of the board because of issues in finance that all nonprofits were going through then and are going through now even more so. And I would have them come in for, I'd, I'd have the insurance brokers in to present the insurance plan every year and have the finance committee there or on the phone so that they could hear the presentation. Um, and I brought in the staff that supported the art policy and supported the facility, you know, the building policy and things like that so that everything was tangible and real right on. Now, I'm doing that as a staff person, not as a, as a board member, but as a board member, I would expect that type of thing, particularly if I had to vote on a large contract being approved or a large expenditure of money. So those are the types of tactical, real life things you can do. Um, you also, I also realize we have to be careful because if you're on the staff side, you don't want to get them in so far that they start to make micromanaging type decisions. But there's a fine line you walk, but you still have to walk it. Um, I think assigning a buddy or a mentor to a new board member for a short period of time would be a really good idea. Um, sometimes they naturally form. It depends on who you're, um, who's on your board and how large your boardroom is. I, the, one of the boards I sat on, we were in a huge corporate you know, boardroom, and you could like look down this table that would seat 30 or 40 people. You know, it's hard if you're a brand new board member to necessarily know what's going on. Um, I encourage you to think about the seating in a board meeting so people start to know each other and, and um, natural relationships start to form. 